Curbing police misconduct. What can we do about police departments that are using deadly force too frequently, that are engaging in police brutality or racial profiling or other problems? Hello, I'm Sam Walker, author of the book, The New World of Police Accountability. What can we do about pol serious police misconduct? When you have a, a bad shooting or a bad physical force incident, many people, first thing they want to do is fire the police chief. Uh, well, that's really just kind of a cosmetic change. What's really needed is to change the, the department itself and to change the culture of that police department. Well, that's a big order, and you might ask, well, how can we accomplish that? Well, we actually have some experience with this, uh, and that experience is to be found in the, the various Justice Department investigations of police departments and the settlements that are found in consent decrees and uh, memoranda of understanding with those departments. Uh, this has occurred in, in Los Angeles, the New Jersey State Police, Washington, D.C., Cincinnati, New Orleans, uh, Seattle. So we have a fair amount of experience with this. Now, the, the various consent decrees and settlements uh, consist of three core elements. Uh, the first is uh, a state-of-the-art use of force policy. Uh, the second is an early intervention system. And the third is an improved citizen complaint process. Now, the use of force policy. Uh, this is now standard in, in the, the best police uh, departments around the country. It's a written policy that specifies when officers can use force and when they cannot, and also includes new procedures for investigating uh, those complaints. And so that in a, an incident, an officer has to you know, account for the circumstances, what was the person doing, uh, why did that justify use of force? And the, the department's own internal investigation involves a very critical review you know, by the sergeants, and then typically by a, a higher level use of force board. Uh, and what this does is, is it, it sets some very clear limits on, on what police officers can do out there on the street. Now, an early intervention system. Some people refer to them as early warning systems. They are a computerized database of officer performance. So it includes uses of force, uh, citizen complaints, uh, arrests, um, traffic stops, uh, pedestrian stops, and each of those incidents includes details about the incident, including the, the demographics of the, the, the people involved. When, the, when you run the numbers in, in the computer with those, what happens is that at the far end of the scale, there are always a small group of officers who are repeatedly involved in problematic incidents. They use force more often than their peer officers. They get more citizen complaints than their peer officers. And there are other uh, elements, other performance indicators in there that, that clearly indicate that this officer has, a, has um, some performance problems. Once those officers have been identified, they can then be subject to counseling by supervisors, uh, referred to professional counselors for substance abuse, uh, or sent to uh, the training academy for uh, training on the specific problems that they have. The uh, early intervention systems are a very powerful tool. They're really kind of the state of the art in terms of, of accountability. Uh, the third uh, element of, of the, the Justice Department consent decrees are reformed citizen complaint uh, procedures to make them open and accessible so that when people feel something was done wrong, that they, they feel comfortable filing a complaint. Now, most complaints are not sustained, but the complaint information itself is extremely important because what you find is that, again, the early in intervention system uh, identifies this, some officers are getting more complaints than their peer officers. That's a red flag and it's, it's a call to, for the department to, in, to investigate that particular officer. All of these things put together, the state-of-the-art use of force policy, the early intervention system, and the improved complaint process, begin to set new standards for police behavior about what officers can and cannot do out there on the street. And over time, this begins to change the, the culture of the department. The culture is defined as, you know, what are the sort of the daily habits of, of, of a person's job. What, what do you do and what do you know you can't do? So changing the, the, the department and changing the culture of the department is the best solution we have for 
uh, improving a department that's got a troubled record on, on use of force. Uh, in some later talks, I'll talk specifically about the use of force policies and the early intervention system. Thank you.